this guy, uh, when I heard he was up for calling in on the day that the Ravens are about to play a, a big-time Thursday night football game, um, he's one of my favorites that I got to meet and greet and uh, at the NFL Network Studios, the old ones now. Um, and I loved chatting with him and getting to know him. He is a two-time Super Bowl champ, but guess what? Uh, he is currently on the all-time sacks list, sitting there at eighth. Everybody above him is in the Hall of Fame, and the one guy who's right below him, DeMarcus Ware, is first time eligible to go to the Hall of Fame this year. He is the man known affectionately as T-Sizzle, right here on the Rich Eisen Show, Mercedes-Benz Van phone line, our friend Terrell Suggs. How you doing, Terrell? How you been? What's up, Rich? What's going on? How you been? You good? Man, I've been hanging, man. You know, I've been changing, you know, chilling out. Okay. Enjoying life. I love yeah. it. I love it. Do you miss uh, tackling people? Do you miss taking people? I do people? not. <laughs> I do not miss tackling people. I do miss the crazy locker rooms, though, and, and the locker room gander. I do miss my boys, but as far as those those man hours, no, nah, I don't miss those. Who is the craziest? Who was it? Was it Ray? Charles uh, who was the one? No, he was a, he was the most he was he was definitely the 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 biggest leader. But crazy along the years, yes. Um, the list goes on. I don't I don't know. Bart was pretty crazy. Um, Bart Scott. Yeah, Bart Scott was pretty crazy. Uh, we we had a we had a couple of crazy guys. I mean, you couldn't really line up next to us if you wasn't a little off. Okay, so let's 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 jump into it a little bit here. Uh, what was it like when you got in that locker room? And there's Ray Lewis. And what was oh, that man. like when you're a rookie and there he is and you know what oh. he's already built and you know what he demands of, of people? What was that like? The intimidation is real. And, you know, his his legend doesn't really do him any justice is because it, it was you are playing with this for real life, larger than life player. You know what I mean? It wasn't just him. You know, it was it was Ed Reed also. They they kind of went hand in hand and then you had the gentle giant J.O. who was on the offense side of the ball didn't talk much didn't say much but you know it's probably the hand down the best left tackle ever to play football so I mean we had all these guys in one locker room but I guess then you get out on a field and there's Ray behind you right and you need to do your job so he can do his and Ed can do his behind him what sort of pressure is that for a young kid coming off the campus um, at Arizona State it's, it's right. tremendous pressure Tremendous pressure. It's like, yo, just to mess this up, you know what I mean, and 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 be what you be where you're supposed to be. You know, when you're a college kid coming out, you know, you know something about, you know, team sport. But when you get into, you know, the big show, the big leagues, and you got those kind of players there, they teach you about account accountability. You know what I mean? And those guys really depend on you to not only know your stuff, but to know the, your opponent. You know what I mean? And study and your study habits. They require you to be. Um, a professional 24-7, not just, you know, when you're at the building, but when you're off the field as well. And, you know what I mean? I mean, they act, they expect that out of you because they expect that out of themselves. So, I mean, you don't get better teammates than that. Terrell Suggs here on the Rich Eisen Show. What was it like in that locker room when the lights went out in the Superdome for the Super Bowl? Oh, man, it was just like, you know, it was a lot going on, especially, you know, with Roger Goodell and Klein and all of us and all of that. But um, when, you know, we was up pretty big when that happened. I don't know, we was up 28-3 or 28-7 or something like that. Something like that. We were up pretty big, and the lights went out on us. And then all of a sudden, they made this comeback, and now it's a game. But, you know, we, we, we finished it out. But it was, it, was, it was hands down the most craziest thing I've ever been a part of. In in a in a football game. Well, how how did you stay calm? I mean, how did you what what happened? I mean, you just go well, back. Well, we thought you know we just thought you know we didn't think it was gonna take as long as it did for the for the lights to come back on, but it, it took like an hour or so. But we just thought you know they were just gonna flip the switch, lights come back on, we were gonna get back to this to this rally, but it didn't happen like that. It didn't happen like that at all. I just remember Harp saying, "Stay loose, stay loose," and all of that. And, you know, and Ray was like, yo, they can't, they're not going to stop us. They're not going to stop us, you know, because that was his last game. And we just we just wouldn't be denied. They made a run at it, though. Yeah. They made was... a run at it, though. Colin Kaepernick, they, they did a, a great job of, of, of rallying back. 
You know what I mean? And it, like, scared all of us. They never took the lead, though. We never gave up the lead. Well, it was 28 to 6 when the lights went out. And so in telling the story, uh, Terrell Suggs, you mentioned Roger Goodell's name, the commissioner of the NFL's name. Are you like Ray? You think somebody pulled the plug because the Ravens were up too big? Are you... I mean, you know, we we'll leave that to the conspiracy. Uh, that, well, Ray's, nah. Ray, Ray's been pounding that table quite a bit. He, he uh, says uh, that a lot. Oh, 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 no. Oh, no. You know, if my leader says it, then, yeah, definitely. Uh, <laughs> NFL was after it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The NFL was up to something. But um, we'll leave that for the conspiracy theorists. We mm-hmm. were, um, but we were just out there having a blast, man. We was having a blast. You know, that was also Randy Moss' last game, too. And he was out there, and it was just, it was it was a real the, the storylines in that game was 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 crazy, you know what I mean? And you know it was the first time two brothers ever met. That's right. In a Super Bowl, so it, the storylines were were crazy, you know what I mean? And you know we we just had fun with it. We had fun with it, and that was really the last time all of us was together. And I, like I always say, you know, New Orleans is special to me. And I just remember us riding on the bus that, like that whole week. I told all of them, like, yo, man, I love y'all. Man. I love y'all. Like, I, I couldn't say it enough, mm-hmm. you know. It was a really special ride. Terrell Suggs here on the Rich Eisen Show. What do you think of Lamar now? Uh, are you glad you don't have to chase him down? I mean, I can't imagine what somebody oh, in your position uh, has to do with yeah. the quarterback that represents your team now. Man, he, he – and, you know, when he first – he's really playing quarterback now, you know, and, like, so he's a little bit more pocket conscious, you know. He, he he don't really think run like. But when he first when his rookie year, he ran every time, and it was a nightmare in practice because he was the scout team quarterback, and it, I had to tell him, I'm like, dude, you, the the quarterback is not as fast as you. You got to jog, you know what I mean? If you're gonna scramble, I'm not gonna pull a hamstring chasing you in practice. So. But you know the, the 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 jump that he's made to be an NFL MVP, and just the wins he like it's we've never seen nothing like it. So you're we've saying you, like you're it. saying when Lamar first got there, right Bef- before he gained the the role of starter midway through his rookie season, you're yeah. saying you needed to pull the rookie aside and say the purpose of you running quarterback of scout team is to mimic the person I'm supposed to be playing against this weekend. And the person I'm playing against this weekend is not you because there's nobody like you. You literally had to say that to Lamar Jackson. Yeah, tell him I had, slow I had down. to tell him he had to jog. You have to jog. <laughs> we were playing Phillip Rivers, whoever we were playing. <laughs> Phillip Rivers. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, come on. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Uh, Andy Dalton wasn't that fast. That's Big right. Ben wasn't that fast. Like you got to come on, man. Did he listen? You got to jog. Did he do? Uh-huh. Did he jog then after that? Did he actually jog? Yeah, but he was still too fast. Even his jogging is that fast. fast. He is amazing. Well, his, his jog is a lot of people's top speed, and, and it was ridiculous. And we like, yo, man, you can't, you can't keep doing that. You know what I mean? He is We're scrambling out there. He is amazing, and and you know. Uh, in 2019, his his MVP year, he was six and two midway through, just like now. He had 400 fewer passing yards than he has now. He had only about 37 more rushing yards than he has now, and only accounts for two more touchdowns rushing or passing than he has now. He has the same number, if not better, than his year that he was the unanimous MVP. Terrell Suggs. I don't even think he's 25 yet. Is he 25 yet? Good question. I've got guys. Who have, thankfully have Google in front of them. Uh, yeah, I think he's probably like 24. I don't 24. Think he's 25. Yeah. yeah, Sizzle, you're right. He's still 24. Yeah. Yep. 24. That's 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 crazy. The kid Evan even went through NFL puberty yet. So, what do you think the Ravens' chances are this year? What do you think as they go tonight against the Dolphins to kick well, off week? You know, time? the Ravens they always got a shot. Well, I mean, what I'm gonna say, <laughs> they always got a shot because you know just the culture and the attitude. They always got a shot to 62 to send the top of their division, and that's a start. You know what I mean? And um, they, if you know, they they play how they're supposed to play. They'll they'll be in it. I think I saw something. If they started today, they would have the number one seed in the in the in the AFC. So, you well, know, I mean, they always got a shot. What do you think of? What do you mean by culture and attitude? It's all just that you know. Um, in Baltimore, they kind of live for November and December football. I think that's when the 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 you know who's for real, and you kind of know 
where you stand and you know if you're a legit contender or not in November and December. And that's the football that they we used to thrive on. I'm pretty sure they thrive on that. So. Well, and when I mentioned a two-time Super Bowl champion to start this thing, do uh, you have any thoughts on Kansas City and why they look so off in a way that they never looked off? You joined them um, at the back end no, of that season. I, I, don't, I don't really have an answer for it, but, you know, Lone's 15, that quarterback, he still got one of the fastest human beings to have a walk the planet got to still they, they still got a, a, a iconic tight end you know what i mean and you know i mean they still got home games so <laughs> as long as they got home games and and uh, and the shot and every game starts zero zero and they got a shot to win it they're gonna play so i mean it's, it's still a long season people don't realize that but that extra game changes everything a lot more team you know having added an extra team to the playoff that changes things like you're not out and you know what i mean and, and an extra game actually puts you gives you a better chance of getting in so um it's still a long season i don't even think they're halfway through yet it might be halfway through right but that extra game is a i'm telling you it's a game changer okay uh before i let you go terrell suggs you want to chime in on the emphasis of taunting in the nfl right now uh what do you got for me on you that you know me i'm an old school guy I, I think it, I think it's it's a terrible rule. I think you know our game was so good is because of the personalities, the identities. Like just think, they would have got, they would have flagged Ray Lewis every play for taunts. He jumped in a guy's face every time he hit him. So uh, I think it's a rule they're going to eventually either lighten up on, or they're eventually going to get rid of it, just like they did with the celebrations. You know what I mean? They was like, oh, you can't celebrate. You can't dunk the ball over the goal. You know what I mean? But then they eventually brought that back because they realized it was good for the game. So um, hopefully the NFL do the right thing and ease up on it or, you know, eventually just get rid of it. Well, I mean, I I don't mind if we're taking out somebody standing over somebody or th- yeah. throwing yeah, a football at somebody. Said. You know, like that 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 has no place. But yeah, that has no place. But when, I mean, but you when you're still but, have sportsmanship, correct. But but when you're now putting such an emphasis on it that a, an official that uh, doesn't see somebody's the front of their body, but just sees the back of somebody staring at a bench and thinking that maybe he's saying something, and we're throwing a flag without knowing, now we're in a totally different ball of wax, like what happened on Monday, and I I can't stand that. That one was yeah, infuriated. Like, you mean I think it has too much of the outcome of the game and you don't really want to take the outcome of the game out of the, out of the field of play on a, on, on a call like that. So, well, let's do this more often. Now that we're back in touch, I remember you used to come on on Ravens cam on NFL total access. I had hair, you were playing football. It was I great. I had hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at yep. us now. Look at us Look now. Look at us now, baby. Look at us Look now. At us now. Great to connect with you again. I would love to have you back on if you're as much as you're up for it. Terrell Suggs. Uh, absolutely, Rich. You know, we love, I love our chat. Right back at you. That's uh, T Sizzle, the one and only Terrell Suggs, currently, right now, eighth leading sacker of all time. 139. Doesn't miss putting people down on the floor, on the turf, but does miss the guys in the locker room. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.